Venus is considered the hellish sister of Earth. The atmosphere of the planet is deadly for humans, and on the surface, there is such a high pressure that the lungs of a mammal would be crushed immediately. Even technical equipment cannot withstand these conditions for long. How should one study such a planet? And why should one study it at all? These are exciting questions that we'll explore in this video. Before we get into the pioneers of Venus exploration and the incredible technical feats of the Russian Venus probes, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel to never miss any of the latest space exploration videos again. Of course, we also appreciate a like if you enjoy the video. Now we're going to move on to the most successful Venus missions of all time, and they didn't come from NASA this time, but from Russian space experts. The missions also didn't deliver the best images ever of Venus's surface last week or last year, but more than 40 years earlier. Whether NASA can top these brilliant Russian spaceflight successes with its plan Veritas and Da Vinci Plus Venus probes is currently still up in the air. We take a look at what the Russian probes and NASA have found on Venus so far and what consequences these incredible finds will have for life on Earth. The Venera Probes In the 1960s, the then Soviet Union was almost as active and successful in space as the United States was with NASA. While NASA was working on conquering the moon, Soviet explorers were cooking up a secret plan. Finally, the Soviet technicians announced something that no one thought possible at the time. They wanted to be the first to visit the surface of Venus. This was considered impossible ever since the surface conditions and the composition of Venus's atmosphere became known. For the first time in 1962, NASA's Mariner 2 probe sent such clear measurement data of Venus that it became clear once and for all on Earth that our neighboring planet is not a lovely water world, but a hellishly hot and poisonous place. Venus's atmosphere smolders with toxic gases and murky mists of sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide. Visibility of the surface is almost impossible from orbit because of the dense cloud cover, and no one knew for sure what would await the first Venus visitors on the surface. The only thing that was clear was that the pressure on the surface of the neighboring planet is about 90 bar, which is as high as the water pressure on Earth at a depth of almost 3,000 feet. With this information, it should be clear that the first Venus visitors were not humans, but space probes. Though it sounds easy enough to send technical devices to the surface of Venus, even this was considered impossible in the 1960s and 70s because our sister planet not only has toxins and extreme pressure, but also maximum temperatures of 878 degrees Fahrenheit melt almost all human technology immediately, if the pressure has not already crushed cameras or sensors by then. So the world rightly looked askew at the plans of the Soviets, and hardly anyone really believed in the success of the missions. But then the Venera probes eclipsed everything that had gone before. They delivered the first razor-sharp images of the surface of another planet, and allowed humans to look into an extraterrestrial world for the first time. However, the Russians had to overcome some serious setbacks before they could get that far. The first Venera probes either flew just past Venus, crashed during landing, or the technology failed during landing. But the Russian scientists did not give up. Tirelessly, they sent probe after probe to Venus. On October 22, 1975, Venera 9 was able to send the first image of the surface of Venus. The black and white photo showed a close-up of boulders. During its flight to the surface, Venera 9 collected data from the atmosphere of an alien planet for the first time over the course of 53 minutes. This was another sensation that was however topped just a short time later. About seven years later, technology had made enormous progress. For the first time, Venera 12 had a panoramic camera system on board, which, wrapped in a thick heat shield, would provide an all-around image of the surface of Venus. On March 1, 1982, the probe successfully landed on Venus and snapped incredible images of a yellow and greenish-brown world. 
With these images, it was clear that Venus was also similar to Earth in some ways. Despite the stark differences in surface temperature and atmospheric composition, Venus namely has landscapes consisting of mountains, volcanoes, and valleys. There is no sign of the extreme heat and toxic gases in these peaceful and picturesque looking images. In fact, many of these mountains are active volcanoes that regularly blow deadly gas mixtures and ash clouds into Venus's atmosphere. Magellan Probe and Images of the Surface of Venus In 1989, NASA followed up, even if the U.S. researchers preferred not to dare the risky flight to the surface of Venus. With the Magellan Probe, NASA sent an orbiter that observed and mapped our neighboring planet from a safe distance over five years. Since the dense clouds that envelop Venus barely allow views to the surface, the probe had to use some tricks. Using radar, Magellan scanned Venus's surface through the dense cloud cover, and scientists on Earth created these vivid simulations from the data. The images provided, for the first time, a fascinating overall impression of the surface conditions and atmospheric processes on Venus. The Russian probes were able to capture real images as they flew through the atmosphere, like this one of Maxwell Montes, the highest mountain on Venus. At 11 kilometers high, Maxwell Montes towers more than two kilometers above Earth's highest mountain, Mount Everest in the Himalayas at 8.8 .8 kilometers. The black areas on these images show the Cleopatra Crater, which is part of the Maxwell Montes Mountain Massif. Experts suspect that a comet hit here at a time when Maxwell Montes was still an active volcano. At that time, large amounts of magma probably escaped from the interior of the volcano through the crater, which is now over 60 miles wide and 1.5 miles deep. These images show formations that are unique in the entire solar system. The almost circular volcanoes, which are still active today, are called pancake domes. The pancake domes always appear in groups and have a diameter of 15 to 20 miles and a height of 2,300 to 3,300 feet. The unusual shape is probably caused by geological features in the deep rock layers of the Earth. Of course, these images represent only a tiny section of Venus's surface. At 7,520.8 miles in diameter, Venus is almost the same size as Earth. Mountains, volcanoes, valleys, and almost endless screes paint a fascinating but also lonely scenario. So far, no traces of water have been found on Venus, and unfortunately, no evidence of sunken Venusian civilizations. The world of science, therefore, has preferred to turn to other research targets in space during the last 30 years, and Venus was more or less forgotten, until researchers announced a surprise that no one had expected. Traces of Life in the Atmosphere of Venus In 2020, researchers claim to have found traces of organic life in the atmosphere of the toxic and hellishly hot Venus of all places. The discovery by the James Clerk Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii was celebrated for weeks in scientific circles as an absolute sensation. Thanks to radio pattern surveys, the telescope was able to detect signatures of a substance called phosphine in Venus's atmosphere. Phosphine is also known scientifically as monophosphane and is a gas composed of hydrogen and phosphorus. We humans can make phosphine artificially, but in nature, phosphine is produced exclusively by microorganisms such as bacteria. Phosphine, like any gas or element, has a typical color and frequency spectrum. The researchers from Hawaii have detected exactly this frequency pattern of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus. Among experts, such traces of organic life outside Earth are called biosignatures. Researchers are constantly searching meticulously for such biosignatures in all known measurement data from telescopes on Earth and measurement data from probes, and thus for reliable evidence of organic life outside Earth. With this discovery, the interest of researchers and NASA turned again towards Venus. Although some experts doubt that the traces actually point to phosphine and to bacteria, there is enough evidence even here on Earth that organic life can occur in the most inhospitable places. In Yellowstone National Park in the U.S. alone, there are dozens of hot thermal springs 
where toxic waters seep up from the depths of a volcano. Although humans and organic material in these springs immediately suffer severe damage, bacteria have been found in the caustic broths that have adapted perfectly to the environment. Currently, proponents of the theory that bacteria may exist on Venus suspect that the microorganisms enter the atmosphere via volcanism. These images show Magellan's footage of Matt Munn's activity. Venus's largest volcano could be on the verge of erupting. Tracks around the volcano told researchers that Matt Munns is very likely to admit large amounts of gases and ash into the atmosphere in the process, rather than streams of hot lava. The New Venus Missions Immediately after the discovery of traces of life in the atmosphere of Venus became known, NASA allocated sufficient funds for renewed exploration of this exciting planet. It's true that Venus could never be colonized by colonists like Mars or serve as an alternate home for humans. Nevertheless, the processes on Venus and the evolution that the planet has undergone over the past million years are of utmost importance to us humans on Earth. After all, researchers suspect that many millions of years ago, Venus was a planet with a friendly atmosphere, seasons, and water. Currently, it's believed that a runaway greenhouse effect, such as the one currently underway on Earth, was responsible for drying out the planet and transforming it into a toxic and inhospitable world. Researchers could draw important conclusions about the evolution of our homeland from the fate of Earth's sister planet. In 2028 and 2030, NASA's Veritas and Da Vinci Plus probes will fly to Venus, while Veritas, as the follow-up mission to Magellan, will again carry out radar mapping from the orbit of Venus, this time only at a much higher resolution. Da Vinci Plus will be the first time a NASA probe will land on the surface of Venus. The technicians currently involved in building the probe jokingly refer to Da Vinci Plus as a flying chemist. During its flight through the atmosphere of Venus, the lander will take elaborate measurements and track down the secret of phosphine in the clouds of Venus. Russia has also put out its feelers in the direction of Venus again. In 2031, the Venera D mission will build on the sensational successes of the 1970s and 80s. Venera D will consist of an orbiter and lander. The Russian Space Commission has already announced that the lander will withstand the harsh conditions of the surface of Venus for a whole month during which time it will probably take more detailed and unique measurements than ever before. So, we should keep our ears perked. Surely the exploration of our neighboring planets will provide us with many more sensational discoveries and big surprises in the near future. We thank you for watching, and at the end of the video, we would like to know which of the discoveries of Venus impressed you the most and what you think about the upcoming Venus missions of NASA and the Russian Space Agency. We look forward to your contributions in the comments. See you next time at Simply Space.